Hello, friends. Welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from March 21st, 1937. They're broadcasting from New York City, and this is a rare point in the Jack Benny Show narrative where Jack and Fred Allen are friends. For weeks, Fred Allen had been saying that Jack Benny couldn't play a piece called The Bee on his violin, and they went back and forth insulting each other in this famous feud until last week. Well, you don't think just because I went on with Jack Benny last Sunday that the people are getting confused, do you? I'll say they are. I saw the man upstairs brushing his teeth with Jello this morning. <laughs> well... <laughs> See, you will get a life membership in the Don Wilson Foundation for that. You've saved them that much work next Sunday. Well, that doesn't make any difference. People brush their teeth with jello just as long as they don't try to buy iPanner in six delicious flavors. They'll be all right. Did you hear his program last Sunday? Yes. What was that static right in the middle of it? Static? Was it before or after Jack and I sang? It was during. During. Well, let me tell you something. Do you know that the next morning after Jackie and I sang at the pier, all of the flowers bloomed in Central Park? They thought the robins were back from the south? In this episode, they mention Jack Benny's last movie, College Holiday. And uh, whatever you're doing, girls, don't forget... Okay, go! Kenny Baker and Phil Harris could be seen in the upcoming movie, Turn Off the Moon. Boys and girls, if you'll all come up around the bandstand, I have a real surprise for you. My secret agent just informed me that there's a young fella here in the room whom you've all heard on the air and enjoyed. My pal, Kenny Baker. Let's get him up. Gee, Phil, I wish you hadn't done that. Say, how'd you know I was out there anyway? Well, one of the waiters told me that there was a fellow out there who would have ordered oysters, but he was afraid he couldn't peel them. So I said, the kid is here. <laughs> I didn't think he'd recognize me in my Park Avenue pajamas. Why don't you leave me alone anyway? Well, I will if you'll sing. But I haven't got any music. Kenny, I've got the music. Gee, you think of everything, don't you, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> Being in New York, they mention some hot spots and nightclubs, including the infamous Minsky's Burlesque, which in the next few weeks would end up being raided by police and shut down due to the reported indecency of the strip teases on stage. And finally in this episode, they mention some songs from the olden days, Pony Boy. Way out west in the nest from the rest was the best little bronco boy. And in the good old summertime. You hold her hand and she holds yours, and that's a very good sign. That she's a good sea in the good old summertime. If you'd like to hear more Jack Benny episodes, subscribe to this podcast or browse and search at thisdaybenny.com. Grab a delicious bowl of jello and enjoy the show. The Jell-O Program, coming to you from the Grand Ballroom of the Hotel Pierre, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Abe Lyman and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with G, but you're swell. often seen the hallmark on gold or silver, but perhaps you never knew why it is there. It's there as a symbol that the article which bears the mark is genuine. In the same way, the name Jell-O on the package is your assurance that the product in that package is genuine Jell-O. And so the reason I keep emphasizing those big red letters is this. Jell-O is a gelatin dessert. The name Jell-O is a trademark belonging to General Foods. When you see the big red letters on the box, you know you're getting genuine Jell-O made by General Foods. So if you hear any other flavored gelatin dessert referred to as Jell-O, you'll know that is incorrect. For there is only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that extra rich fruit flavor. That's why Jell-O is the most popular gelatin dessert in the entire world today. So be sure you get the real thing. 
always insists on genuine jello. New York for arrest and has to go back to Hollywood to get it, Jack Playboy Benny. Well, hello again. I got this horn left over from last night, folks, and I want to tell you, Don, you're right about me being a playboy. I'm a regular demon since I've been in New York. Shows and parties and one nightclub after another. Woo! Oh, Jack, stop carrying on so. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not as bad as you're painting yourself. I'm not, eh? Don, I've been carousing around like a madman. Boy, am I sophisticated. <laughs> I can't understand that, Jack. You don't drink anything. I don't, eh? Last night I had a gin fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> That's fizz. Fizz, fuzz. Who cares as long as I have a headache? <laughs> Well, uh, tell me, Jack, are you glad that you're going back to Hollywood tomorrow? Oh, yes, Don. After all, how long can I keep up this mad pace? You know? Imagine, imagine you setting a mad pace. Have you attended any teas? What's that? Have you attended any teas? Uh, afternoon or strip? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, uh, I'm good, wasn't it? All right, Jack. I'm like, I thought that was good. Right. Anyway, I'm really just all in. Oh, hello, Abe. <laughs> hello, squirt. <laughs> Work. If you've been hanging around with me lately, you'd find out what kind of a guy I am. Oh, you're not so wild. No, oh, that's what you think. Only yesterday I was thrown out of trap. <laughs> you were? Yes, sir, and I would have reported that bouncer if I knew her name. And I'm not kidding. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Toot, toot. I mean... <laughs> 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 Where'd you get that horn? I wish I knew. Say, Kenny, do you notice anything different about me tonight? Huh? Oh, really? No, why? Well, can't you see those? Can't you see those? Can't you see those dark rings under my eyes? Huh? Gee, I thought it was mascara. Well, it is. Hey, Jack, give me that horn, will you? Oh, no, this horn and a chicken sandwich cost me $14. Say, <laughs> Kenny, we missed you last Sunday when you had to go back to Hollywood. How did your picture turn out? Oh, swell, Jack. You know, Phil Harris is in it, too. And, oh, boy, the girls at the studio are hanging around him. Oh, taking my place, huh? huh? Nah, these are young girls. Oh. <laughs> Say, Kenny, who has the love interest in your picture? I have. And there's one place where I sing a love song to the leading lady right under her balcony. Yeah? And when I finish, she smiles and throws her rolls at me, and then she comes running down the steps. Yeah, and then what happens? Uh, that's when Phil Harris takes her over. <laughs> well, that's not very fair. Don't you feel badly? No, I got a rolls out of it. Well, when I get back to Hollywood, he'll have some real competition. I've learned plenty here on the gay white way. Hello, you little desperado. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> Say, Don. Yes, Mary? Uh, take that horn away before he plays the bee on it. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mary, I've just worn to a frazzle from this constant hurly-burly and excitement. I gotta go someplace where I can be alone for a couple of hours. Uh, why don't you find out where your last picture's playing? <laughs> yeah, well, don't be so funny. You know, I've got to go out on a party again tonight. Parties and nightclubs. I tell you, I'm getting to be the best-known rounder on Broadway. Go on. You couldn't get a ringside table at the Automat. Oh, I couldn't, eh? No kidding, Mary. I really think that Jack has turned out to be a pretty wild sort of a guy. Oh, yeah? He went to Minsky's the other night and fainted during the opening chorus. <laughs> well, it was hot in there. <laughs> was it? Wow! <laughs> Kenny! Now, let's drop all this talk. I'm on the ragged edge now. And, hey, play something soothing, will you, so I can sort of pull myself together? Okay. Say, Jack, when you go out tonight, you want to try something that'll pick you right up? Sure, eh? What is it? A striker's cocktail. Well, I bet this is a peach of a gag coming. I can see that. <laughs> a, striker's, a striker's cocktail? What's that? One drink and you sit down. <laughs> oh, no, not me. I can hold my own. 
Why, you even stagger from an alcohol rub. <laughs> you bad dog. Better be careful, Jack. You keep this up and you'll look as bad as Fred Allen. Now, wait a minute, Lyman. You're talking about my pal. You say one word against Allen, I'll have him knock your block off. And I'm the guy that can tell him. <laughs> Freddie and I may have had our little spat, but underneath it all, there's a spark of loyal friendship that can never be extinguished. <laughs> Play, Lyman. <laughs> by Abe Lyman and his orchestra. And incidentally, folks, Mr. Lyman is making his farewell appearance on this program tonight because we are going to Hollywood next week, among other reasons. Meaning what? Meaning uh, nothing and put your coat back on. <laughs> hmm. uh, what's the matter, Jack? You afraid? Afraid? <laughs> Wait till you get that letter I'm going to send him from California. Hear that, Abe? Jack's going to write you a nasty letter. The laugh's on him. I can't read. <laughs> you said it, especially music. <laughs> How is that, Mary? I can sing faster than Lyman. Who can't? Oh. I can't. <laughs> well, I don't want to start any brawls up here tonight because it so happens we have a very distinguished guest with us. Oh, Jack. It's not you, Kenny. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very dear friend of mine is visiting in New York and has accepted my invitation to attend this broadcast. We grew up together, went to the same school, and he is now the chief executive of my hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege and a pleasure to present his honor, Mayor Mansell Talcott of Waukegan, Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I really uh, didn't want to impose on you, Mayor, but knowing you were in town, I couldn't resist taking advantage of it. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I'm glad to be with you. Thank you. Well, Bidey, that's his nickname, folks. Uh, you don't mind, uh, do you, Bidey? No, no. We all had nicknames in those days. Remember yours? Mine? Oh, yeah. Let's see now. What was it the kids used to call me? Tuffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Tuffy Benny. Did you hear that, Mary? I was quite a scrapper in those days. Time marches on. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Well, Bidey, tell me something about home. How's Julius Sinigan, Stub Wilbur, Ollie Imerman, and the rest of the gang? Eh? They're doing fine, Jack, and they're all proud of you. Oh, well, say, you remember Vivian Thompson and Hazel Clark and... Uh, say, Bidey, how's my Aunt Josephine? Oh, fine. She's still on the fire department. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good old Aunt Jo. I can still see her sliding down that brass pole, you know. <laughs> Bidey, I'll bet the town has changed a lot since I've been there. Sure has, Jack. You remember the blue suit that used to hang in the window in your father's store? Yes, I do. Well, there's a gray one there now. <laughs> probably the same suit I told Dad to buy an awning. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bidey, now that you're here, I do want to congratulate you on the success of your political career. Thanks, Jack. You know, I bet when we were kids and went to school together, you never dreamed that you'd become mayor. You got about the lowest marks in the class, didn't you? No, next to the lowest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought we were tied. <laughs> Not quite. 
Say, Jack, on your way back to Hollywood, you're going to stop off at Waukegan for a day, aren't you? I certainly am. Yes, sir. That's fine, because we're planning a celebration for you. Jack, Benny, Day, and Waukegan. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. I now, do. Now, we're not going to make a formal affair or present you with a loving cup or the key to the city. Well, I'm glad you're omitting that ceremony. However, I called a meeting of the local merchants, and as a token of our esteem, we decided to call off all of your old debts. <laughs> well, thanks, but I imagine they're outlawed by now anyway. Uh, now, Bidey, before you leave, I'd like to have you meet the members of our cast. I know they're eager to meet you. Uh, first, Mary Livingston. Mary, this is His Honor, Mayor Talcott of Waukegan. How do you do, Mayor Talcott? Hello, Mary. Say, Jack, is that a real mustache? Yes, it is. Quiet. Huh? Gee, there's not much of it, is there? Mary. <laughs> Now, Bidey, I'd like to have you meet our orchestra leader. Not that it'll improve your social standing. <laughs> anyway, this is Abe Lyman. How do you do, Mr. Lyman? Glad to know you, Your Majesty. <laughs> hey, that's your honor. Go on, Your Honor's a judge. I ought to know. <laughs> there, you see what I'm up against? And this is uh, Kenny Baker, our tenor. Well, hello, Kenny. How's that wonderful voice? If you'd listen in every week, you'd know. Kenny! <laughs> your honor! Now, come here, Don, and don't embarrass me by asking the mayor if he likes Jell-O. Bidey, this is Don Wilson. I'm very glad to meet you, Don. How do you do, Mr. Mayor? That's better. At least Don got the title right. Yeah, but we got the last. Yeah, go away. <laughs> well, Bidey, it's about time for Lyman to play a number, so how about you and I sitting down and having a little chat? Or you and me, rather. Which is correct, Abe? Uh, you and I, or you and me? Hmm? You and him. Don't drag me into this. <laughs> play, Lyman. Come on, Bidey. Right with you, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, as our feature attraction tonight, in honor of my boyhood friend, Mayor Mansell Talcott, and also to revive memories of our youth, we will go back through the years and reenact a day in our lives when I was just a kid helping my father in his department store in Waukegan. Uh, Bidey, would you like to help us out and be a kid again for a few minutes? I sure would, Jack. It'll be fun. You will have some stuff there. <laughs> now, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen... And this is a little sketch about my dad's store. I will play the part of my old father. And I've engaged little Junior O'Day to play the part of Jack Benny the child, as I am too modest to repeat the many clever things I said when I was a kid. <laughs> Gee, I was bright. <laughs> well, let's get started. Mary, would you like to be a customer in my father's store? 
Not at his prices. I'll give you a discount. <laughs> uh, Kenny, while we're fixing up the store and moving in the merchandise, you can sing your song. Huh? All right, Jack, but don't be too noisy. We won't. Sing, Kenny. Come on, fellas, give me a hand on this. Will you? <laughs> picture the king and the chorus girl. And Kenny, I want to tell you that week's vacation did you a lot of good. I mean, your voice sounds sweeter and more melodious than ever. Yeah, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you back about 25 years to the thriving little town of Waukegan. The scene is the Benny's department store, more widely known as the Emporium on South Genesee Street. Now, remember, folks, I play the part of my father. Let's go. Curtain. Music. Hello? Waukegan Emporium. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Fenchel. Yeah, a birthday present for your husband? Well, we just got in something new, a nightshirt with pants. They call them pajamas. <laughs> no, you don't need suspenders. Yes, I'll send them over as soon as the horse gets up. Goodbye. Jackie, Jackie. Yes, Pa? Go into the back room and practice your violin. I'm not spending 50 cents a lesson for nothing. Oh, I don't want to. You're going to learn to play the violin if it takes a week. <laughs> now go in there and practice the B. It'll come in handy 25 years from now. <laughs> then what's the rush? What's the rush? That little Freddie Allen is talking already. <laughs> now get in there and practice. Oh, all right. And don't practice too loud. I got to make a living. <laughs> hmm. Certainly an unbusy day. Hello, Mr. Banning. Well, little Mary Thompson, uh, what can I do for you? Nothing. I'm just window shopping. Window shopping? Why don't you do it outside? Why don't you wash your windows? That <laughs> was dangerous. Last time I'd done it, the glass warped. <laughs> Say, how's that suit I sold your father? The coat and pants are fine, but the vest drags on the ground. Well, just tell him to tuck the vest in his trousers. He did, but his foot got caught in the pocket. <laughs> And you can't blame the suit if he's clumsy. Close that door, Jackie. You know, Mary, someday that kid of mine will be a great violinist. Well, right now he's lousy. Hey, <laughs> get away from that door. Stop hanging on my sign. People will think this is a pet shop. <laughs> Ah, 
good morning, Mrs. Wilson. Uh, what can I do for you? I have a complaint to make, Mr. Benny. You have? Yes, I washed that tablecloth you sold me, and now it's a scar. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Wash it again, and you got a handkerchief. There it is. <laughs> oh, there's your little boy, Donald. Uh, uh, how old is he now? Nineteen months. Well, well, what a cute little rascal. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> My, what a healthy-looking youngster. Uh, how, uh, how much does he weigh? 210 pounds. <laughs> 210 pounds. Well. And look, he's got six delicious chins. Dern does he eat. <laughs> well, does he, uh... <laughs> does he talk yet, Mrs. Wilson? Does he? Darling, say something for Mr. Benny. Glum, glum. Oh. Now, come on, Donald. You can do better than that. Swamp where we, well, where we, can we, all be, them and, uh, uh, Come on, baby. Uh, lime. <laughs> oh, now, isn't... Now, isn't that just too, too de boo? Huh? Isn't that cute? I wish his rattle was heavier so I could sock him. Well, just wheel him under the chandelier. It looks shaky. Well, I guess I'd better take him home. Yes, yeah, goodbye, Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye. Jackie, not so loud. Ah, good morning, boys. Hello, Hello Mr. Mr. Benny. Benny. Say, where's Jackie? He's in the back room practicing. Can he come out and play ball with us? No, he can't, Mantell. All you think of is playing ball. How do you ever expect to become mayor of this town? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll make it. <laughs> well, you can have my vote now if you'll buy a suit. That's fine. I'll be able to put the city hall in my vest. Mm, don't be so fussy. Oh, please, Mr. Benny. Won't you let Jackie come out and play ball with us? I said no. Oh, gee, we need his violin for a bat. Well, he can't play baseball with you. He might hurt his hand, jeopardize his musical career. He's got two strikes on him already. Oh, yeah? He'll make good. What was that? Who threw that stone through the window? I did. This is my last week anyway. <laughs> Abe Lyman again. Well, run along, all of you kids, and stay out of here. More trouble with those children. You think I was running a playground. Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, anything uh, for you? Uh, yes. Uh, what's the price of that suit you have on display outside? Where? Right out there in that dummy. Hmm. Oh, Jackie? Yes, Pop? Go out and tell Uncle Julius to move around once in a while. <laughs> Anything else, sir? Uh, yes. How much is Uncle Julius? Get out of here. 23 skidoo. This is... <laughs> well, that was good in those days. It's a fine store. It's been three weeks since I heard the cash register ring. And the good old summertime comes filling up them so Well, Mr. Schlepperman, the traveling salesman. Say, did you hear that applause? You think it was your hometown? It will be if I don't get my expense check. <laughs> well, Schlepp, what line are you handling this year? Mr. Benny, have I got a slinky line of suits? Ah, nifty, but I kept a little nifty. <laughs> well, I don't know. Everybody's complaining about that last lot of suits you sold me. Yeah, what's the complaint, honey child? <laughs> The uh, coat and pants are all right, but the vests are too long. What vests? Those are overcoats. <laughs> overcoats? And where are the vests? In the side pocket. Why don't you look around? Uh... Well, can't use any suits, but summer's coming on. What have you got in men's bathing suits? Ah, now you're talking. I got here some bathing suits that will make you head swim, I'm telling you. Men's bathing suits, eh? Yeah, here they are. The latest creations in Paris. Oh, imported. Well, they look pretty good. Hey, these are only the tops. Where are the trunks? They missed the boat. <laughs> well, maybe I can sell them during high tide. <laughs> Gotta wait for that one. Pretty good. And uh, Mr. Benny, I'll put you down for a couple of dozen. Anything else I can show you out there? No, Slap, I guess that's about all. Oh. What's that? 
That's my little boy, Jackie, practicing. He's going to be a great violinist someday. Don't you think so? You should live so long. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I... Sorry, I gave an order. Now, Jackie, Jackie, it's time to close up and get home to dinner. Okay, Pop. Blow out the lights, son, and let's go. In the good old summertime... In the good old... Hey, that song is pretty popular, isn't it, Daddy? Number one on the hit parade. <laughs> it is? Yep, it passed Pony Boy last week. <laughs> well, come along, son. Let's close up and go home. In the good old summertime. In the good old summertime. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, look. There's still a customer in the store. Well, lock him in. We'll get him tomorrow. In the good old summertime. <laughs> Officially, this is the first day of spring, and wherever you are, here's a spring to your menus. It's called Tropical Dessert, made with tangy, sunshiny lemon jello, and it's easy to make, too. You just dissolve one package of lemon jello in one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened, and then fold in four figs and eight dates chopped fine, and one banana thinly sliced. Mold and serve either plain or with whipped cream. It's gay to look at and downright delicious to taste. Why not plan to serve this tempting springtime dessert soon? But be sure you make it with genuine Jell-O, or Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor. Flavor from fresh, ripe fruit. So ask your grocer for Jell-O by name and look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. <laughs> number of the 25th program of the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Well, Abe, I want to thank you for your swell cooperation, tell you how much everybody's enjoyed your work on this program. And I'm going to tell everybody on the coast that you're not as tough as we made you out to be. Well, I don't know about that. I'm pretty... Quiet, uh... quiet. Well, Slap, it's been nice seeing you again, and I hope you come out to California. Well, you never can tell, Jackie boy. I got a trailer. Well... <laughs> When you get a car, pull it out. <laughs> and, Bitey, I want to thank you, too, and congratulate you, uh, not only your political success in Waukegan, but on your dramatic triumph. Thanks, Jack. And, by the way, don't forget to forward all of my fan mail to Waukegan. Yeah, what street address? They know me there. Oh. Huh? Well, folks, looks as though we'll have to leave you now. Uh, say, Jack. What, Mary? Is uh, Mayor Talcott married? Why, certainly. Oh, then I'll go out with Lyman tonight. Yeah, good night, folks. <laughs> Keep me warm with some on the avenue. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>